I am fully aware that the green on this shirt is probably going to seep into the green screen behind me, but I don't care. It's my absolute favorite My Hero Academia shirt, so I gotta wear it when talking about the My Hero Academia movie. Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron. And I'm Michelle. This is our Post Geek Out reaction for My Hero Academia 2 Heroes. Now, if you have not seen a Post Geek Out reaction before, I think there's a decent number of people who are going to be discovering us through this video. Simply because I think there's a lot of people out there who's like, I gotta find someone out there who's reviewing the My Hero Academia movie. So, yeah. Hey, new viewers. For anybody who doesn't know, Post Geek Out Reaction, it's a discussion between the two of us about the thing that we just watched. And that will include spoilers, but only after we have given it our score. We divide up the non-spoilery part and the spoilery part. So if you want the spoilery stuff, stay until the end. If you don't want the spoilery stuff, you're just fine now. You'll know when to tune out. So, let's go ahead and get into this, but let's start by kind of talking about our feelings towards My Hero Academia. We both love this series. Yes, we do. We absolutely love this thing. I have gotten hooked on this in a way that I have not gotten hooked on anime in a long, long time. And it's not just us. Uh, I have seen so many people online who are like, yeah, I don't like anime at all, but I like that My Hero Academia over there. Uh, there's a podcast I listen to, and the host of it, he absolutely hates shonen anime. Likes regular anime, hates shonen anime. He hates Naruto, hates Dragon Ball, hates Bleach, One Piece, hates all that stuff. He is obsessed with My Hero Academia. So, yeah, this is really one of those special, amazing shows. We did a roundtable discussion. Our dog is sneezing, by the way. Yeah. For anybody who is wondering what that sound is, yes. she's got the sniffles. Sorry, buddy. She's got the sniffly sneezies. Uh, but yeah, we even did a roundtable discussion uh, right before season three of the anime started up. So if you guys want to see that, I'll be linking to it at the end of this video. Um, so yeah, now that that's out of the way, uh, even though we absolutely love this, even though we are huge fans of the anime, I will go ahead and admit, I went into this movie with low expectations simply because... Even though I love the anime, it's an anime series movie spinoff, mm -hmm. which just to shorten it, I will refer to that as anime movie from here on out. And yeah, anime movies don't have a good track record. No, nah, it's like, the thing is, it has to like maintain what's in the series, so they can't really like do anything. You can't do anything of substance. Yeah. Yeah, you can't like change anything or anything like that. Uh, but the same, but also, a lot of those anime movies, they're just kind of made as cash grabs because, like, this thing is popular right now. Let's do more of this thing. Uh, and a lot of times people will also have complaints that, oh, well, this thing doesn't even match up with the continuity, which I don't have that much of a problem because I grew up on Dragon Ball and, like, maybe two or three of the Dragon Ball movies you can actually fit inside continuity. <laughs> All the other ones do not match up at... Oh, I remember they made one Dragon Ball movie that literally the only time it could exist is in between two episodes of the show during, like, the Majin Buu crisis. Like, when the entire world was being destroyed, the only time this movie could exist is during, like, half an hour when everybody had a free time during this one little second here. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, you, I have no problem if it's like, well, when does this exactly fit into the whole storyline? That's not that big of a problem for me. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, is there going to be anything important in here? Am I going to yeah, learn exactly, anything important? Right. Uh, are the characters going to progress or grow? Any? No, because you can't have that happen in Yeah, there. that's always been an issue with me. Like, Yeah. Uh, it's like, what's the point of this even being, even existing if, like, nothing is going to, like, change in, like, the series? You yeah, know? Like, exactly. Um, it's really just there for fan service. Yeah. Which I'm okay with, but it's got to be damn good fan service <laughs> to kind of justify this. Uh, I think... Only the two anime movie, like, spinoff things I've ever seen that I actually liked was the Full Metal Alchemist movie. Oh, I'm sorry. Stop. Stop. Wait. Mm, <laughs> the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood movie. Because the actual Full Metal Alchemist movie is awful. Yeah. Uh, the one that comes after the first series in which they're now trapped in the real world. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're trying to stop Hitler. And, like, what is happening here? <laughs> What am I watching here? This is awful. Um, but the one that they made for Brotherhood, in which it was just like, a, hey, here's like one adventure we just didn't tell you about. Uh, that one I actually really liked. Uh, I also really liked Dragon Ball uh, Battle for the Gods, 
Uh, I actually think that's easily the best movie that they've done, and it's honestly one of the best Dragon Ball things ever. I freaking love that one. But at the same time, they were really safe on that one because it came out like a decade after the show had ended, so they didn't need to worry about anything. It's like, yeah, so I didn't really watch too many anime movies because I got into anime a little bit late. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I've only like watched one Bleach movie, and it was like... <sighs> I forgot about those. <laughs> and at the end, it's like, oh, we we're out. This is oh, we're gonna have to wipe your memory. They literally, yeah, I know the exact <laughs> what you're talking about. I, in fact, that was actually the first of those anime spinoff movies that I actually watched in theaters because back in college, I was a big fan of Bleach. This was long before it completely went to crap. I know some people are going to say it was always crap. Well, I liked it at a time, but eventually, yeah, it totally went to crap. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, but I remember at that time, when the first movie was coming out, it was the first time I ever saw, like, Fathom Events was going to show it in theaters. I was like, an anime movie is going to be in theaters? <laughs> As for Bleach? Oh, man, I gotta find out where this is. And at the time, I was living in bumfuck North Carolina. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, where's it gonna be showing? Bumfuck Virginia. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to Virginia. <laughs> Yay! And yeah, I drove for hours to see that thing. And I remember liking it because, hey, I'm watching Bleach in the big movie theater, like it's an actual real thing, everybody. But then, like, you know, a month after it, I was like, that was really dumb. <laughs> that was pointless. That was stupid. Like, yeah, literally at the end of it, it's like, we got to introduce a brand new character. And then the only way that she can exist is if we erase all your memories at the end of this so you don't <laughs> remember anything about this film. <laughs> all right, fine. Whatever. <laughs> That's me when I was in college. My voice is cracking. <laughs> um, so yeah, they really... Animated spin-off movies kind of suck in general. They're really just there because like, do you want to see more of this character? And give us money for you to see more of this character? But I will say, this one is awesome. Yes. I love this movie. Like, after we saw this movie, I wanted to turn back around and go right back into that theater. <laughs> it's still playing for like three more days at the time that we're recording this. That's mm, <laughs> so tempting. <laughs> it's very tempting, but like our theater was sold out. In fact, it was so sold out. We went to a 7.30 show and the theater that we went to when we got there, they only had the 7.30 show. And when we got there, it said 8.16 showing. And I was like, nobody schedules an 8.16 showing. <laughs> this was a last minute. Oh God, we have sold out. Like, before we even let the general audience start buying tickets to this thing. And that's a lot of pissed off nerds out there. <laughs> uh, what isn't selling? What is what is the quickest that we can get this up? Like, they didn't even, like, cancel another screen of something. Because yeah. nobody shows anything at 816. You couldn't tell that they were just like, what is the earliest we can get this on? Like, the theater probably wasn't even cleared out from the last <laughs> show of whatever was in there. And they're like, get people in this theater. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping that they like extend this, put this in more theaters because I've been hearing from people on Twitter who are like, I really want to see this, but it's not playing anywhere near me. It's like, yeah, man, I feel your pain. As I said, I had to drive to a different state when I was in college to watch the anime movie spinoff that I wanted to watch. Aren't you glad we live in New York now? God damn, I am. Because <laughs> there's so many opportunities here. But yeah, I'm like, I want to go and see this again because it's so good. But at the same time... I don't, if all of these are selling out, I don't want to take tickets away from someone else who might yeah. be about to watch this thing. Oh, but man, it's not even like seeing this at home would be the same. Because the audience, I swear, we'll start actually talking about and critiquing the movie in a second. But the audience was so good for this movie. Yeah, they were all nerds just like us. Anime <laughs> movie nerds are the best movie nerds because they get into it. Okay, they're not the absolute best ones, because I remember as soon as the movie was over with, like, everyone in that theater was like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, like, as soon as we were leaving, I heard, like, everyone around me was like, well, you know, it's all of, like, the little errors here and there that just make this really inconsistent. Well, that's like, to be I'm expected like, from Dude, fans. you were standing and applauding at the end of it. It's like, don't get me wrong, you can have critiques of it like that, but... Don't immediately try to kill your own hype to make yourself seem professional. Like, yeah, we're doing a movie review show right here. I will talk about the negatives that I have with this thing, because I do have some negatives. But man, if you are standing and applauding, like, why on earth are you going to immediately pump your own brakes so that then you can turn to your friends and go, well, here's all the problems I had with this thing. It's like, it's... 
Honestly, you want to know the reason why? It's because to say that you like something, it's brave. Because when you say that you like something, you're basically setting yourself up for other people to tear you down. Mm -hmm. For other people to point you and go, no, it's not. That thing is bad. So if you come in automatically being defensive and saying, well, here are all the problems. Before I actually say how much I like this thing, here are all the problems that I have with this thing. You are putting up giant layers of armor so that way people can't come at you and go, well, that thing you like is actually bad. Like, dude, I know you like this thing. I saw all your asses standing up and cheering and applauding this thing. I know you all enjoyed it. Just enjoy it for a couple minutes, baby. Just be happy about the thing that you were watching. Have yourself a good time. Then later, after that hype cools down, then come in here and you can tell all the things that you didn't enjoy with it. That's fine, but like... Again, it's not like we were standing outside of the theater and we heard people. People, as they were walking out of our theater, were like, the first thing that they were saying to their friends after the movie stopped rolling was, well, here's the things that I didn't like about it. I was like, shut the fuck up and be happy for five seconds because I know you were happy about this. I saw you being happy right in front of me standing up and being happy. It's like, uh, okay. Anywho, but yeah, that crowd, man, I love that crowd <laughs> uh, during the movie itself because... They were so in like the woman who was sitting next to you. Yeah. There was like a moment with uh Bakugo and what's his name? Kamashita? I want to say. Is it? I think it's I think it's Kamashita. I can only remember like five of their names because yeah. there's so many characters. Uh but the hardened guy. <laughs> uh and there was a moment between and she just started going. <laughs> like I saw that hand going, oh hey Peach, no, I'm not telling you to jump in my lap. <laughs> Yay! No. <laughs> she kept uh oh, that's adorable. Anyway, um, but yeah, she was getting into it. it was like every single like surprise reveal was <gasps> like everyone was into that. Oh, get up in the lap if you're going to jump up here. All right, there you go, boy. Uh, yeah, everybody was getting into it. So yeah, that might have affected my joy for it. But that's another reason I want to go and see this in theaters again. Like I want to go and see this like at one of the Times Square locations because they have huge theaters. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so I want to see like what an entire giant room is like for that. Oh no, don't fall, Peach. No, you're in quicksand. Um. Sorry, I have to play with the dog every now and again. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Anyway, uh, so as we were saying, let's go ahead and actually talk about the movie. The movie itself is about, and for anybody who doesn't know what My Hero Academia is about, I'm not going to come in here and sum it up for you guys. Yeah, you can watch some of our other videos where we talk about we it. We did it's a so roundtable cool. discussion in which we talked about that. You and gotta put a link to that? Or? Yeah, it'll be a link. There'll be Very some cool. pop-up. Um, but also, like, just go on Crunchyroll. Like, even if you don't have a Crunchyroll subscription, you can just sit through the commercials. <laughs> I literally... I literally put the dog down on one of her squeaky toys. So it sounded like the dog squeaked when I put her down. All right, sorry. Uh, but yeah, go and watch it on Crunchyroll. Uh, it's all there. And yeah, there will be commercials unless you have the paid subscription. But the paid subscription is actually pretty good. Uh, you can also go on Funimation and watch all the dubs. You can go on Hulu and watch both dubs and subs. Yeah, man. There's so many ways to see this. Go ahead and watch it. I have heard from so many people on Twitter telling me, I only watched this thing because you kept talking about I love this thing. <laughs> Dude, it has a 100% success rate with all the people I have recommended this to, so go ahead and watch it. Uh, but what the movie is about is that All Might has been invited to this place called Eye Island, and it is an island made up of like 10,000 scientists, and it's a man-made island, and it can actually like move around the world. Yes, and I think that's like really clever because it like prevents like villains from finding out where they are and yeah. like trying to like break in and everything. So and what's so interesting is that there's actually things like this in like Marvel and DC, but it's always run by super villains. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I love about My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia is so positive. My Hero Academia actually is like a series that believes in a better world. And this, I kept looking at it like in like regular American comics, this would be run by supervillains. Instead, this is actually like a shining beacon of hope. Mm -hmm. This is actually like a good thing in this world. Um, so yeah, he gets invited there and he's going there to see his old friend from college, Dave. And he has one free ticket, so he brings his young ward, Deku, along with him. So they arrive there on the island, and he meets up with his old friend Dave, and as we were mentioning, most anime spinoff series, they're not allowed to change anything. They're not allowed to really make anything different happen with these characters. You can't really expand on them any. They're just there to be like, hey, watch these characters in action one more time. This actually gives so much backstory to All Might. Mm -hmm. It gives him such a backstory. 
and it fills in so many gaps because All Might is from Japan, but every single move that he has is called like Carolina Smash, Texas Smash, Detroit Smash. Like every single attack that he has is named after an American location or mm -hmm. state. And it's like, why? Uh, I guess like it's supposed to be like in honor of all the big American superheroes that inspired the series. I understand that, but like speaking inside the world yeah. itself, what's the reason behind that? This actually gives us the reason. Yeah, like he was a... Uh, he, he was, was a transfer student. Transfer student, yeah, that's the word. Transfer student to um, America, and that's where he met Dave. Yeah, and him and Dave in college, they were a dynamic duo. Yeah. They went out and stopped crimes, and Dave, he didn't have a quirk of his own, but he was a super scientist, so he supplied All Might with all these gadgets, made him a special super suit. He's the one who actually came up with all of All Might's suits, so again, there's a backstory to his suits now. Yeah, it's like... It would be like if, you know, you watched a Dragon Ball movie, and you found out that the gi that Master Roshi gave him, like, oh, this is actually handed down by, like, this immortal warrior from years past. Like, oh, there's a backstory to that now. They wouldn't do that in a Dragon Ball movie. They did in the freaking My Hero movie. Uh, yeah, it's like, I feel like, uh, like, All Might and Dave are, like, Captain America and Falcon. Yeah, Captain America and Falcon, like, Iron Man War Machine. Yeah. You know, like, those, like, classic, like, not like Batman and Robin, because that's, like, a hero sidekick thing. Like, no, they are on equal level here. Yeah, but, they like, are they friends. Just, yeah, they're, but they fight crime differently. So. Yes. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, absolutely. Um... But yeah, there's like a moment in which in this flashback, uh, All Might's charging the battle. He said, I named this one after your home state, Dave. And I was like, that's where <laughs> they all come from. That's where all the names for his moves come from. We now have a backstory on this. And we also know like another place of like where he trained. Like we know who his master was, who it was that inspired him to be a hero and gave him the all for one. No, sorry. One for all power. Yeah. I'm always going to get those confused. <laughs> Uh, we know who gave him that, but yeah, there's still a decent chunk of his hero career that we don't know about. This paints so much of that in there. We get to learn so much of that. Um, but they get to the island, he meets Dave, uh, and Deku meets Dave's daughter. Uh, Melissa. Melissa, thank you, because I keep calling her Alice for some reason. She does look a bit like an Alice. Maybe it's the, it might be the blonde hair. Maybe I'm thinking the blonde of like Alice hair, in Wonderland. Yeah, Maybe. sort of, but yeah, it's, her name's definitely Melissa. It definitely was Melissa, yes. Uh... But yeah, so Melissa is showing Deku around the island, and All Might is talking to Dave, and Dave is like, he's not the big, shiny, like, happy guy that he was before. He's sad. Yeah. He is super sad, and a lot of his sadness comes from the fact that he knows that All Might is losing his powers. Because Dave keeps telling him, he's like, listen, the crime rate in Japan is 6%. Everywhere else in the world, it's 20% or higher. The reason why it's so good in Japan is because of you. If we lose you, what will happen to the world? Like, we need more people like you all over the place. We need more symbols of peace. And, yeah, you see that All Might, even though it pains him that he's losing his powers, you really do get a feeling of, wow, this is the impact that All Might has had. And this is how much it pains other people. Like, because Deku doesn't even really know how much it's hurting All Might all that much. Like, every now and again, like when he was fighting Nemu. Yeah, you saw... No, was it Nimru? The big brain guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got that moment in there of Deku being like, oh no, he's he's pushing himself past his limits. But man, yeah, this was not like a big heroic moment. This was like, Dave is looking at him on operating table just like, I don't know what to do, man. Like, it's really emotional right there at the start. Yeah, and like... Also, All Might did not tell Dave that he passed his power on to Deku. That, yeah, he doesn't know that. Yeah, yet. like he said, like, we have to keep this a secret because if he finds out, then, like, the villains are going to go after him. So it's like it's for his safety and everything. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so you understand why you can't, like, just tell everybody about this. Yeah. Um, so uh, Deku was going around with Melissa, and I actually really like Melissa in yeah. this. Uh, because she also was not born with a quirk. She's part of that small percentage of the population that didn't have a quirk. And so Deku is looking at her like, oh man, I she's just like me. Except that Deku kind of is like a little bit inspired by Melissa because whereas Deku was just like, I don't know what, I, I'll still try to be a hero. I'll still try my hardest. Melissa's actually already doing it. She didn't need All Might to give him power. Like she was like, well, I'm just going to study and invent gadgets. Yeah, it's like, everyone. I can save the world in a different way. Yeah, it's, it's really cool seeing that. And there's moments in here in which it's like, Okay, Deku is All Might's ward. She is Dave's daughter. There are moments in here which it's like, this is the next like generation yeah, of those exactly. guys. You totally get that feeling in there. In fact, there was even a moment in there which I was like, 
This is so smart. The heroes should have. Like, all the young heroes here, they do need somebody who can invent them gadgets. Somebody who can give them, like, good technology. And they remember, they do have that person. She's just insane. <laughs> uh, so, it's like, okay, uh, well, I guess they already do have that one. Uh, ooh, they would probably prefer Melissa, though. Mm -hmm. um, not that I dislike that character. That character is awesome. The inventor girl who they have. She's great. I'm just saying, she's pure chaos. <laughs> um, but she's showing him around the place, and he's just geeking out like he always does. Mm -hmm. uh, because this island is full of high-tech equipment that will be used by heroes, but it's also just full of all these other heroes, which it kind of feels like a missed opportunity that they didn't have any of the heroes from the show guest star in there. Because there's a lot of heroes who we have been introduced through throughout the course of this series. And it's like, or is it, wait, is this island like inhabited by heroes or just like the scientists? It's just by the scientists, but this is their big exhibition. This is like their world's fair thing, in which yeah. this is when we invite all the other A-class heroes to come here and we're going to show them all the stuff that we've been working on for them. So at the moment, it's got tons of heroes there for this like once a year kind of thing that comes mm -hmm. up. But I kept looking at it, it's like, yeah, it would have been nice. Like, this isn't a negative to the movie or anything, but it would have been nice in terms of fan service if we got to yeah. see, like, a couple people we already knew in there. Uh, although I do like the heroes that they do have in there. Uh, there's one that's just Godzilla. Yes. And he's called, like, Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks like Godzilla, but with, like, one of those big, like, ruffian trench coats that, yeah. like, Japanese, like, ruffians wear. I don't know the exact word that they use for it. There's, like, a distinct word for it, but, yeah, uh, I actually really dug that. Um... But he's there, and then he also runs into his fellow classmates, who also happen to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I love the moment when Ochako uh, pops up there, uh, because this is still at that point in the series where Ochako like, has that massive crush on Deku, but she doesn't know what to do with that crush. Uh, because she just sees him hanging out with someone two years older than them <laughs> and like a full foot taller than Ochako is. And she's just like, you're having fun, Deku. Oh, Jabu, I didn't know you are here. You're having fun, Deku. Just like she's in like just blank space, like blue screening there. She doesn't know what to do. It's so adorable. She's the best. <laughs> I freaking love that character. Um, I love all the characters yes, in the show. Yes, they're all very good characters. They're all so good. Um, but yeah, so she's there. Momo is there. The Earjack girl is there. They keep walking around a little bit, and they discover that uh, the electric guy and great boy, <laughs> they, like, wanted to come here because they're the perverts in the class, and they're like, oh, shoot, yeah, there's going to be some some really cool, like, superhero ladies there. We can hit on them. So they get a job as waiters there at a restaurant, and then they run into, like, Bakugo, who got invited there to test out all the, like, combat drones because he won the UA Sports Festival, and he had free tickets, so he brought Kamashita along. But then, I know that's not his name, by the way. It's whatever the red spiky-haired guy is. <laughs> uh, but then Todoroki is there because his dad's a professional hero, so he got tickets to come to this thing. And then Aida yeah, yeah. is there because his family is a line of successful heroes, so they all got invited, so he came along to this thing. And yeah, I kept looking at this like, okay... I do want other characters there because one of the great things about My Hero Academia is the huge roster of great characters that they have going to the school and how every single one of them get like moments to shine. They get those moments of being spotlighted. But there came a point in here in which everybody got to come here and they each had their own unique reason for coming. And it made me feel like this was like one of those 1970s sitcoms where they had like the, we're all going to Hawaii, everyone. And they get there, it's like, my wacky next door neighbor, what are <laughs> you doing here? It was one of those feelings. Um, like it felt really forced that they had to come up with different reasons for every single one of them to be there. And I wish that this had just been like a school trip. Yeah, and and because of that, I kind of feel like it do it um toned down like the excitement of like Deco being chosen. The importance of yeah, Deco. the importance the importance of Deco being chosen by All Might to go with him. Yeah, it's like okay, that's not that special thing. Literally everyone in your class got to come along. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there's many people here who we never even got a, get a reason why they're here. They're just like there in the background. It's like they cut to one scene of them and then they like go back to like the main cast. Yeah, like the tape guy in Sugar Rush. Yes. They're there, and there's never a reason for it. It just at one point cuts to them, like, in, like, a diner, just eating. <laughs> and they're just, like, watching stuff on the news there. It's like, what the hell are you guys doing there? Or, like, um... The, okay. the other, the rest of the girls. The rest like, of the girls, they at least at one point say, oh, yeah, the other girls are here, too. And it's like, wait a minute, why are the other girls here? Because we saw a scene where they all had to do, like, rock, paper, scissors to decide who would get Momo's free tickets. 
how did Momo, how did the other three get to come along that <laughs> didn't win? Which, by the way, the rock, paper, scissors scene is adorable because Invisible Girl has to hold out a cardboard sign that shows the sign. <laughs> it's so darn cute. <laughs> this show is adorable. Um, but yeah, so they all got, so everybody who didn't win the rock, paper, scissors and got Momo's free tickets, they still got to come for some reason anyway. Well, I think like they went, like Momo went to like the pre show. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. She got tickets to the big fancy stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I like they were that. only there for like the actual opening of the uh, expo. Expo. So they got to just hang out in there. Yeah, exactly. Out. They All couldn't right. really do much. So that's pr that would explain why. That makes why. sense for them. Yeah. But then you also get like the bird guy and the guy with all the arms. Yeah. Uh, just walking. They're just right. walking down the block. And they, they have one line each. Like, I guess we should get back to the hotel. All right, let's go. Like, that's <laughs> it. Who the fuck are you guys here? It's like, hey, it's us. Okay, bye. Yeah, and that is another uh, small problem that I do have with this is that all the main characters who you got to see, like, okay, here's the reason why we're here. They all get to do stuff throughout the rest of the yeah. show. But there comes a moment later on, I'll skip ahead a little bit, but there comes a moment later on in which villains take over the island and they take over all the security androids. Mm -hmm. And you see security androids roaming the streets and you see the security androids are like, return to your homes, everything is fine, return to your homes. And the moment I saw that, I was like, ah, I know what's going to happen. It's going to come a moment in which the security androids go nuts and all those other characters who aren't there like trying to save the day you're gonna see them popping up in the streets like trying to save the day you're gonna see like tape guy and sugar rush and the bird guy and the three girls there in their hotel room you're gonna see them coming into action and trying to save the day no nope. nothing nope. no it never nope. happens i was like that is an ama okay again anime spin-off films are kind of meant to just be there for fan service that would have been great fan service to see that, like them they're already there show them going into battle and saving the day like saving the civilians on the street no, that didn't happen. And yep. set up perfectly to happen. Yeah. It's like it'd be like it'd be one thing if they just didn't do anything with him, but no, there is a total reason why they should be doing something. And no, we don't get it. So yeah, that's another small problem. So yeah. I thought it was kind of lazy how they just force everyone onto the island. Like you should have just said it's a school trip. And then you could have gotten, you know, um then you could have gotten some of the other teachers in there. That would have been great to see. Um, you could have gotten uh, President Mike and, oh God, what's his name? Uh, Vision Guy. <laughs> Eraser Head. Uh, thank you. Jeez, I'll never forget that. Uh, yeah, it's like you could have gotten those two guys in there as well if it just had been a school trip. Uh, so yeah, I didn't really enjoy yeah. how they introduced everybody in there. And it feels like they didn't use the ones who weren't the main characters as well as they yes, could have. but like... The but that's about all I got as far yes, as that like, is. It's like... When you realize, like, what the characters have to do to, like, save everybody on the island, it's like, oh, that's why that character is here, because they can use their quirk to do that this. That has always been one of the strongest <laughs> uh, features of My Hero Academia, is that it's not like, you know, it's not like Bleach or Naruto or uh, especially Dragon Ball, where there eventually gets to a point in which they're like, oh, are you not one of the strongest people here? We're never going to use you again for anything. <laughs> No, man, granted, we're only up to, like, uh, in the manga, we're up to around issue 200, which is still pretty far ahead compared to a lot of other mangas out there. Uh, but I don't know how far we're into the anime. In the anime, we are through, like, three seasons of this thing. But still, this is a series where they never let anyone get dropped off. Every single character in this series, it's not about, like, who's the strongest. It's not about, like, who's the one who can punch the hardest. Everybody has unique powers, and they're going to make sure everybody gets the opportunity to show, hey, this is why I'm trying to be a hero. This is what I can do with this thing. And, yeah, basically the setup for this thing is that there's the big fancy dinner that all the heroes go to, and then it gets attacked by villains, and they use some of the high-tech equipment on the island to restrain these heroes. So even All Might can't break free from it. So the only big heroes that are there are the students. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones who can do this. But, yeah, Ida straight up tells them, listen... We are not allowed to use our powers to fight these criminals. We don't have the right yet because in this world, it is established, no, you need a license. You need to do all this stuff before you can actually start fighting the bad guys. Uh, you're not allowed to go in there and do superhero stuff. And it's like, all right, well, we're not going to do that. We're going to get to the top of this building where the control panel is. Then Melissa is going to use her big brains to override what they did and basically free all the heroes. And it's like, okay, well, that we could actually do. And yeah, again, another thing that I love about this show is that they're just students. So they're not coming in here and going, the students are now way more powerful than the teachers already. No, they are looking at this like, no, 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 no. we need them. We can't stop these big villains just by ourselves. We're still just students. All we can do is try and save the heroes. And yeah, that is the point of this. 
and it still makes you cheer them on. It's not afraid to come in here and go, listen, it's not about, like, who punches the hardest. I mean, at the end of this, it all <laughs> But, like, yeah, it does show, like, listen, every single one of you is going to use your abilities to try and save the day. And, yeah, we do see some of these characters actually fight some of the villains, but it's in those opportunities where, like, they're cornered and they have to yeah. do it. Uh, it's not like, all right, we're going to storm the castle and save the day. It's like, no, this is a stealth mission, this entire movie. Uh, but it absolutely works for them. Um... So, yeah, this uh, film really, in many ways, did capture the stuff I do love about the series because it did really just get to the nature of, like, no, 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 it's not about, like, what you can do. It's about what you can... It's about how you use your powers. Um, because, yeah, even, like, the great kid comes in here and does something to help save the day. Yeah, like, usually he's, like, the worst character, like, arguably... I like, hate him. He's everybody one, hates him. But he's it's, the one character that everybody is like, in Even on. in this movie, he's still actually tolerable and actually does help he's everybody else. He's so much better out. in here than he normally is. <laughs> yes. And it's like, why can't you be like this in the series? Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Normally it's the other way around. Normally it's like, well, in the movie, you don't really get the nuances of the character and all the little like in between stuff man he's way better in here than he is in the actual <laughs> show so much better in here um so yeah uh, i really dug uh just seeing them all work together to get to the top of this yeah. thing because yeah i dug that this was not just okay well we have to figure out how to fight the biggest bad guy here no it's how do we get around everything how do we get through all the security measures how do we get up this giant ladder how do mm -hmm. we get past these giant wind turbines, like, stuff like that. And, yeah, there's a large group of characters here, and every single one of them has an ability that comes in handy. Like, Earjack Girl's power is that she can listen through walls, and she has super hearing, so she's able to, like, do surveillance and help them get around the villains and help them communicate with All Might when they're trapped there. Yeah, but, like, the villains also, like, learn from, like, them, too. It's like, oh, maybe... Like, like there was, like, I remember, like, one scene where it was, like, hey, try to keep quiet. I think one of the people who are trying to, like, oh, break like, in. Oh, like, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, like, they, the villains are actually smart enough yes. to try and, like, counter what they're doing. Right. Which is good, because when you show the villains are smart and they're not just being taken out by a bunch of teenagers, uh, it makes you realize, like, okay, yeah, they're actually a threat. Yes. And, yeah, the big villain at the end of this, you don't learn, like, any backstory or anything to him at all, but that's fine, because he's meant to represent a thing, which I'll get into when it gets in the spoiler mm -hmm. part. But he's dark. Yes. He's threatening. Like, he does stuff in here that I was not expecting to have No, happen. I was not expecting either. There's, like, two moments in a row that made our audience gasp. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it does come down to, again, like, Deku tries to fight this guy. Because at the end, you have to. And he can't beat him. It's, yeah, it's that's how strong this guy is. Because, again, this is not Dragon Ball, where it's like, well, Goku just has to get stronger. It's like, yes. no, man, if you, gotta be, if you gotta beat the bad guy at the end, the bad guy's gonna be stronger than you, it's gonna have to do with teamwork. It's gonna have to do with strategy. You're gonna have to be smarter than them. You're gonna have to actually figure stuff out. Um, I won't go into too many details about how they beat him at the end. But, yeah, uh, needless to say, the end of this movie, it is... The rest of this movie, I would give it, like, we're going to get into, like, score time here. Yeah. The rest of this movie, I would give, like, eh, I'd give it, like, an eight, you know, uh, because it's good. It's, no, you know what? It's great. It is a really good My Hero Academia movie. The ending of this movie is an 11. <laughs> the ending of this movie was everything I could possibly have wanted out of a My Hero Academia movie. Uh, so, in the end, if you are not a My Hero Academia fan, this isn't the way to get you into it. But honestly, I think even non-My Hero Academia fans will be able to enjoy something about it. Yeah, this. I mean, like, they actually do take time to explain what's going on. Yeah, you do get enough of an introduction to everybody in here. The animation looks great in here mm -hmm. as well. Um, so I think that even if you're not a My Hero Academia fan, I think that you'll be able to walk out and like, yeah, that was enjoyable. But speaking it for My Hero Academia fans out there, I would give this a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Uh, like, the only, like, reason why I would say this is not, like, a perfect film for the My Hero Academia fans out there is because, yeah, I think it was kind of lazy how they just got everyone on the island there. And there is a perfect opportunity to show the people who are not part of the main group actually doing stuff, and they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, oh, that's kind of... Yeah, I think I would give it, like, a nine and a half, because once again, it would not be like a... It would be a perfect score if it weren't for that little... Those little issues you brought yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, also, even though I came in here and I said, like, yeah, I like that, you know, everybody's got their own unique quirks and works in different ways, and it's not all about, like, who can fight who... You see a large group of villains in there, and they only really fight two of them, and then the main guy at the top is like, oh, you kind of like divide this up, like, shows, like, you know, a couple other guys, like, fighting the other guys, like, man, it's like, yeah, maybe a little bit, but that's, again, that's like the Dragon Ball side of me, it's like, no, if there's, like, nine villains, and you have nine heroes, they're all gonna have to fight each other. Uh, 
then all the heroes will lose and Goku will fight them all at the end. Um, no, that's not. That's more like Naruto's thing. No, that's Bleach. Bleach would do that all the time. In which they would have, like, this many heroes, this many villains. They all match up one for one. Then the earthly heroes lose and all the Shikigami have to come in here and save the day. Shikigami? Shinigami. That's Shinigami. A, it's been a while since I watched Bleach. <laughs> My brain, my brain is like, we need space to remember all the My Hero Academia stuff. Shove Bleach out of the way. It's not important anymore. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and get into like the spoilery stuff mm -hmm. on this one. Uh, early on in this film, Melissa gives Deku a special gauntlet that will allow him to punch at 100%. Yeah. And I was like, well, that thing's going to get destroyed by the end of this. Uh, so it was kind of, that was another thing in which I was like, all right, you had to give him something that make that lets him do the thing at the end of this that he does. Yeah, but there's also, like, a good reason why she gave him the gauntlet. He, she, she has a good reason. Like, even when I kind of want to take a point off for this, because I was like, oh, that's kind of lazy that they just came in here and went, here's the big MacGuffin that you're going to use at the end of this to save everyone's day. I was like, oh, that's kind of introduced lazily. She has a reason for it. Yeah, like, she knows, like, the scars on his on his fist and everything, so it's Yeah, like, and she's like, she actually studies heroes so she could tell as he was fighting. She's like, yeah, I can tell you're only using, like, 5% of your powers. Like, yeah, it's like, that. that's another thing. It's like, I love how smart Melissa is. Like, yeah. she, like, she does not, like, she puts things together herself. She does not need someone to come along and, like, explain things to her. Also, and that makes sense because, you know, she's going to be a scientist like her dad, so she has to be smart and everything. And I love the relationship between Melissa and Deku, because there's that moment in which, like, Deku is fighting the big villain at the end, and she's running off to, like, reactivate the system and everything, and both of them, like, in unison, going, like, I will save everyone. I was like, man, these two really need to work together. Yes. <laughs> these two really need to be the next All Might and Dave. Like, yes. I want to see them working together. Yeah, it's like, I feel like we're not going to see Melissa ever again. No. Nope. Which is very disappointing because, like you said, they should be the next All really Might and Dave. <laughs> if she's popular enough, we have seen in some mangas they have brought the characters from the movies and, like, from filler arcs into the mangas before because they were just that popular. So it's not impossible to have happen. It could happen. It could be a thing. Uh, heck, for all I know, they probably turned this into a manga already. <laughs> it wouldn't shock me. Uh, so, yeah, it's possible. But, yeah, she is a great character in here. Like... I really love the moment in which, like, yeah, they're all in fancy uh, nightwear uh, because they were going to this party. And which that's kind of another fun thing to me that, like, it's almost like a diehard situation to me. Because, <laughs> yeah, they have to get to the top of this tower, like, but they're not in their superhero attire. They're in, like, fancy gowns and suits and yeah. uh, tuxedos. They're in formal wear. They're in formal wear. Yeah, I kind of dug that little touch in there. Uh, but yeah, there's a moment in which they have to manually climb the stairs up to the 200th floor, and you see her just kick her high heels off, and I actually heard, like, women in the audience like, yeah. It's <laughs> so like, yeah, okay. That one, that one was there for the ladies. Like, yeah, fuck these pumps. Get them out here. I'm gonna run up these stairs. Also, like, like Ochaku, like, offered her quirk to her to help her, like, you know, keep up with the rest of the heroes. That is like, one thing that I like about the whole Ochaku has a crush <laughs> on Deku thing, is that it never becomes like, oh, no, a love triangle is now formed. A rival. A it's rivalry. like, no, no. No, she, she just... gets the little, like, panic mode for a moment. It's like, oh, no, is he gonna like this? Person? But then she calms the fudge down, and then she's like, nope, hero time, gonna work with you. Not, like, it never even comes up again. Of like, oh, does Deku like this? Never comes up again in this. And man, applause on that. Uh, also, man, it's really good to see like more things out there go like, hey, male character, female character, no romance in this. They're just working together as we a team. We don't have time for a rom romance. Like, <laughs> we don't have time for romance. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, so yeah, that was a really good thing to do with the character. Uh, but at the end of this. When it gets revealed that Dave actually hired all these villains to come here so that he could then steal back his research that the big I Island Council said, eh, this is too dangerous and too experimental. We were not going to allow you to work on this anymore. So he hired all of them to do a fake robbery so that way he could get this device back. I was like, wait, what? Like, I, did, I wasn't on board with that because it kind of felt cheap to me because Dave clearly had a secret throughout this entire movie. Like, throughout this entire movie, he definitely had, like, some kind of a secret he was working on. But then when you get his motivation behind this, yeah. in which he was like, I'm not doing this for evil reasons. I'm doing this because All Might is dying. He is losing all of his powers. And if the world doesn't have All Might, have you seen how messed up the world is? Do you know what could happen if we lose the symbol of abuse? Like, 
Oh shoot, man! Yeah, like this is like I'm on his side in this. It's, it's funny because like All Might deliberately did not tell him that he passed down his uh, quirk because he thought it would endanger Dave, but it turns out like it kind of backfired. Dave screwed everything up himself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah. But the thing is, like, he didn't even realize that he hired like actual villains. Yeah, because like, he got his partner to do this, and then like when the guy in the mask comes in at the end, it was like, "I'll be taking that from you." He's like, what are you talking about? You're actors, right? You hired actors. And the guy's like, um, yeah. It was like, yeah, oh, yeah, you couldn't like, find actors willing to pull off something this crazy. Uh, and he was like, I just couldn't stand by while they took away all our hard work and yeah. dedication. It's like, you understand, like. You his, understand it. Yeah. You're not, well, that doesn't mean that you agree with it. No, you exactly. understand it. And that's yeah. like. That's the sign of a really good, complicated character. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that what they did with Dave was fantastic mm -hmm. in here. Um, but at the end of this, uh, man, nobody can scream in anger and pain and sadness all at the same time quite like Deku. <laughs> uh, at the end of this, when they're taking off in the plane with Dave on the plane with him, and he's like, give him back! I was like, oh my god, you feel that! Uh, that's another reason why you like Deku so much. Mm -hmm. He's like, you see this kid get his ass kicked on the regular, and he's just still doing everything he can. Like, you see this kid push himself so hard, uh, and this movie is no exception. Uh, but then at the end, because they were able to free all the heroes, All Might comes in there, blows up the helicopter, and rescues Dave all at once. It's like, yeah, that's All Might, all right. All Might can do the thing that these heroes, that these students worked their hardest to be able to achieve and still failed at. And he can do it in like five seconds flat. Just no problem. And again, that's the thing that I like about this show is that it's like, okay, the students, you're not at the level of the A-class heroes yet, but that's good because it shows that you're going to grow. You're going to learn. We're going to watch your progress. But it also shows us you having to be smart because you have to figure out what you can do with the abilities that you have. Mm -hmm. This movie really encompassed that. This movie really showed that. Um, but at the end of this thing, the big villain, he gets on, uh, the special device that enhances powers that they were going to use on All Might, and he has Magneto powers. Yeah. But he turns into Akira at the end of this. Yeah. Like, he takes the entire 200-story building and just turns it into, like, this giant construct, mm -hmm. and he's just sitting up there like a Final Fantasy boss at the end, uh, and he is just wailing down on even All Might. Uh, and man, I gotta go ahead and give credit to the American voice cast on this, because typically when we have the option, we will listen to dubs over subs, typically, typically because we watch anime when we eat dinner together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when you watch a sub, you have to be looking at the screen the whole time. And when you're eating, it's like, okay, let me get this thing, let me get this thing. Oh, I missed an entire <laughs> line of dialogue there. Uh, yeah, so we typically uh, listen to the dubs when we can, but the dubs have fallen behind by like two weeks. That's still massively impressive that they're able to keep up that much. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's been about like three, four months since we've heard the dubs. Man, this is easily the best the dubs have ever been. These guys are great. I always thought the dubs for My Hero Academia was pretty good, but they're always those characters who I had like small problems with. Uh, most of whom are not really in this movie at all. Like Mina, I always thought like, yeah, she's good, but she's not as good as the Japanese voice actors. Mina has like two lines in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all the other people, the people who get like the main focus in here, they're all some of the best actors in the entire show. Um, and Chris Abbott as uh, All Might, at the end of this, when he is just like screaming out for Dave and just like going in there full force, man, he was giving it his all. Those years of having to scream as Vegeta really paid off <laughs> for this moment. Uh, but Deku, the guy who plays Deku, he's a fairly new voice actor. Man, he is kicking ass in this character. He is so good as him. Um, but at the end of this, All Might, his powers are fading, and then all the other heroes, they have to come in here, I mean, all the other students, they have to come in here and try and help, and then All Might actually looks at Deku and is like, what do you say, young Midoriya? Do you want to help me stop this villain? And then it's Deku and All Might fighting side by side, and it was as I was watching this, I went, oh my god. We never got that in the show. No. This is his hero. This is the guy that Deku formed his entire life around. The guy who he dreamed of becoming, and the guy who was like, you know what, I'm going to pass my quirk on to you, you're going to become just like me, I'm going to train you to become a hero. And we never got to see them fighting side by side. We never got to see them working together 
as I said, one of the things that an anime spinoff movie should be is fan service. And it should give you that stuff that you love from the show, but you never got to see. Like, that stuff that you always wanted to see in the yeah. show. Yeah. This is the best example that I have ever mm -hmm. seen. I have never seen another anime spinoff do something on this level. Uh, it was great that they actually did this. And our audience was losing their mind. Oh, yeah. And that was one of the moments, again, in which uh, the girl sitting next to you was just like... Ah! Yeah! <laughs> and, yeah, like our entire audience, like there's just a moment that shows like the two of them like running side by side, and our audience is yeah, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> they could not contain themselves at that. And I love seeing an audience that can't contain themselves with joy. So yeah, this movie like nailed that at the end. At the end, you get the double Detroit smash. Mm -hmm. Man, Deku got to pull off his favorite move <laughs> with his favorite hero. That is. It is such a great thing to see. Like, this movie gave us that one thing that we always wish we could have seen in the show. And, you know, spoiler alert for what happens in the show and in the manga, you're never going to get to see that. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be a thing that happens in the show. And we got it in the movie. And it was so great. Like, like I said, there's a reason why as soon as we saw this, I wanted to turn right back around <laughs> and go right back in there and watch this again. Um, so, yeah, I... The ending of this film is perfect to me. It's not... <laughs> One thing that we even forgot to mention. Yeah. It's not just that the action is perfect. It's that there's a moment when he charges in there and he's about to punch this guy. And then the guy forms super strength. He's like, where did you get a second quirk from? No. He's like, yeah, I mentioned that I was going to the place where All Might was. And he was more than happy to help. And then you see All for One is the guy who like, yeah, uh, this was all according to All for One's plan. It ties itself back into the show. Mm -hmm. So you get an even more of a connection to this villain who has been, like, tormenting them throughout all of this. Uh, and it's not like, you know, in Inuyasha with Naraku, where it was like, yeah, everything fucking comes back to Naraku. It was like, no, this was a genuine surprise. This was a genuine, like, oh, my God, I did not see that coming. Um, so, yeah, the ending of this is fan-freaking-tastic. It's everything you could want in a My Hero Academia movie. It's like... The only thing I kind of wanted in the ending was, like, an epilogue where I got to see, like, all the classmates enjoy the expo. You got a little well, bit of that in the credits. It was, like, in the credits where they were, like, just, like, You scenes. saw them all having a barbecue? Yeah, and it's, like, I kind of, like, wanted to, like, see them, like, actually, like, walk around the expo and have fun that while the credits were rolling. That would have been nice. Yeah. That would have been nice, yeah. I've always said I kind of enjoy when it comes to, like, anime characters with the big cast of characters. Sometimes I enjoy just the day-to-day, -day, like, yeah. just them chilling and hanging out stuff mm -hmm. more than uh, the big superhero stuff. Which, again, is a thing that My Hero Academia does fantastic. That, like, whole episode where it was just them showing off each of their individual dorm rooms, that's one of the best <laughs> damn episodes of this entire show. Um, so, yeah, uh, it would have been nice to get a little bit more of that. Uh, I did enjoy seeing them at the barbecue, and also I really enjoyed just the ending, in which is just All Might uh, just staying up there at the top of this hill and Deku staying beside him and they both have this look of like, yeah, we're going to go out there. Like, it's all right. It's going to be okay. Uh, because All Might doesn't have to say anything at all in that scene. But you can tell this dude is tormented because his best friend is probably going to jail for a long time. But he did it to try and help All Might. And yeah, that's a complicated situation and All Might is going to be very upset about this. But Deku's there like, I'm, I'm here for you, big man. I'm here. I'm, trust me, boss. We got this. Uh, I was like, yeah, that was good. And I love that they didn't have to say that. Um, but another thing that I love that they didn't have to say was, we mentioned how incredible it was that All Might and Deku were teaming up. Mm -hmm. I love that this movie never once stopped to have Deku going, I can't believe I'm teaming up with All Might. Or none of the students was like, oh, wow, is Deku and All Might fighting side by side? They never had to say why this is an important moment. But our audience lost their goddamn minds because everyone in our audience realized why this is such a big, important mm -hmm. moment. Um, but another thing that I love that they didn't have to say is that the reason why Dave was stealing his device back is because he was afraid of the future. He was afraid of, oh man, if All Might fails, if All Might goes away, then all of these just criminals are just going to rise up. And the big threat at the end, I said that I had a little bit of a problem with the fact that, yeah, he's just a criminal. But towards the end of this, I realized that's the point. He is the embodiment of everything that Dave was afraid of. Just a random criminal with too much power and no one to stop him. It was everything that Dave was afraid of, and Dave helped create that. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this, 
he gets that one little vision of All Might back in his college days, in his first suit, like going out there in that big pose swinging, and then that vision fades away, and you see Deku in that pose, and he never has to even stop and like say what he's feeling in that moment, but you get it. You get the feeling that he's like, oh, everything, there will be another symbol. Yes, like, everything will be okay. <laughs> yes, it's like, even, it's okay, it's fine, citizens, Deku is here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, you don't need All Might to be around forever. There will be another symbol of peace. And yeah, he didn't really have to stop and say that. I mean, he and All Might had a little speech after that, but like, yeah. he, they didn't have to stop and specifically say those things. Because yeah, this movie was like, no, our audience is smart enough to understand the thing we just showed them. Uh, yeah, this movie, it's so damn fun. Uh, I will buy this thing on Blu-ray when it comes out. I hope it's low with bonus features. I hope it's got audio commentary from both voice acting cast. Uh, I hope it's got a making of thing in there. I cannot wait for this thing to come out. Uh, because I really want to watch this again. I just want to, like, go back to that <laughs> moment over and over again. Uh, I won't lie. I still go back, to, uh, every now and again, like, when I just need, like, some motivation when I'm, like, editing or writing. I'll put on that scene of, like, all my fight in Nemu. Just because, like, man, that gives you a rush. This is going to replace that. This is going to be that new scene that's, like... <laughs> um, I love that they didn't play uh, You Say Run, which is the big epic music whenever yeah. they're going in and being superheroes. I love that they did not play that until the very end, and there were so many moments in which it sounded like they were about to start playing it. Like, there's that moment in which, like, All Might is looking up at his students. And he's like, no, don't go and do it. And then they run off to go and save the day. And then All Might just smiles and like, oh, who am I kidding? I know my students. If anybody can do it, it's them. And this is exactly what I trained them for. I love that. I love that, like, he has faith in his students. And he doesn't have faith that his students can beat the villains. He has faith that his students will be smart enough to be able to avoid the villains and save the day that way. Uh, yeah, I love that he has that faith. And in that moment, like, you heard a little bit of that score coming up. And I was like, oh, it's about to kick in. It's coming. No, no, nope. it's coming. Okay. Nope. They, nope. they saved, they it, saved for it for the end. Yep. Good for them. Uh, but yeah, so love this movie. I'm giving it a solid 9 out of 10, but that is easily the best ending to any of these movies. 9 and a half for me. 9 and a half for you, yeah. Almost perfect. Uh, yeah, this is easily the, like, best, like, ending to a anime movie spinoff I've ever seen. It's probably the best anime movie spinoff I've ever seen, period. Uh, granted, that is a low bar to clear, <laughs> as we were talking about, but yeah, there have been ones I have enjoyed, but this is... It's the best. It is. I can't, I can't say any of the other ones I've seen are as good as this. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I don't know if we're going to review any regular movies this week, because I'm busy prepping for a month-long celebration coming up in just a few days. Uh, by the way, I did like a little like fake out at the end of Wednesday's video, in which I was like, yeah, I think I might just be quitting this whole channel. For any of you guys who are loyal enough to stick around long enough, that's all set up for a bit. I'm doing a bit on Monday. It's fine. Uh, um, spoiler. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in, for checking out this video, and uh, come back next time. Mm -hmm.